You're listening to episode number 127 of the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. In this episode, I talk to a student of mine. His name is Matthew Bonadonna. And in our time together, he shares with you how he went from having it all in life, quite literally, and having an amazing life, and still not being happy. He went from there to leveling up and peace and mental wellness. And he even kicked many years of anxiety in the midst of all of that. Now, in our time together, he will share with you how he did it. And what I want to share with you is what Matthew can do, you can do. So if you're interested and you want to know about how Matthew took all this, you know, this this mess in his life, as a matter of fact, you'll hear him call himself a disaster. How Matthew went from that to, again, leveling up peace and one of the best relationships he's ever had with his wife. Well, if you want to learn all all of that, then keep listening. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so today we've already done an intro here at the podcast. We're talking to Mr. Matthew Bonadonna. Uh, I love your last name. I think a lot of people in the group <laughs> love your name, Bonadonna. Yeah. And as I said, it reminded me of Roseanne Rosanna Dana from the 1970s uh, Saturday Night Live. But yeah. Anyway, Matthew is somebody that we knew would be a, a, a good person to share a message with you guys um, before we started talking, and I've known Matthew now for, I guess, four months, but yep. before he and I started talking today, he said something about, I made a note here, about his life being, and he's going to explain what this means, being a disaster. And that's the exact word you use, is the disaster. Yeah. So where I want to go in our time together is you also said to me, you've got everything that people are supposed to want in life. I mean, whatever that is for you, but you, you have a good life. So yes, why sir. are you not happy? Is what I wrote that down. So let's go there. What does that mean when you share that sentence? Well, I think uh, in society with television and how everything is, you know is portrayed to us, it's go out, get a job, own a business, make a lot of money, buy things, uh, have experiences, and your life is going to be like this is the pinnacle of life, correct? Mm -hmm. And so as my family, uh, you know, and my businesses grew over the years and things became attainable, I, I was even further miserable <laughs> than I was when it wasn't like that. I mean, the pressures of business, the pressures of continuing to succeed in life and, you know, you're going to go out and you're going to get X, Y, Z, whatever that is, and that's going to make you happy. And then you, you have it. And you realize, wait a minute, it's cool for a week, but yeah. you know, it's not, it's not what life is about uh, or what life should be about, in my opinion. And so when I said I was a disaster, people would come up to me and be like, oh man, you got everything, you know, y'all have this and look at y'all. And I'm just sitting there going, I, I just want to be with my family. I just want to you know, be able to take three days off and not have to worry about anything or answer the phone or I can go and talk to this person because I just want to go and talk to them and I'm not worried about, you know, what they're going to think. Yeah. So you, you stopped living from the outside and started living from the inside. I, I live more from the inside now than I've ever lived in my entire life. Mm, that's, that's huge. And I want to go somewhere here completely off this topic now, you being in a program of mine recently, you shot a video. We have a very vibrant community, as you know, a very yep. active and supportive community. You shot a video, but it wasn't until maybe the fourth week of our time together, something like that. You shot, a, <laughs> he knows where I'm going to go with this. 
Yeah. And he shot a video. And now, four months later, you're on my podcast. And you know that I have a pretty sizable audience, much larger yep. than our, our group that you were in. And you wouldn't shoot a video initially because of what? Because of the way that I speak. Exactly. I'm laughing now really hard, guys, because he's now <laughs> on the podcast. And yeah. notice now, three months ago, he would, because he's, you're Cajun, right? You're, you're Louisiana. I'm, I'm from South Louisiana. I have an extremely thick accent. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did not want to shoot a video or do anything because uh, I thought of myself as unpolished, uh, not educated. People are going to hear the way I talk and immediately you know, think that I'm uneducated. Uh, so I had a lot of, uh, a lot of emo internal emotional uh, fears around it. Um, and in now reality, yeah. And Did in reality, yeah. that's, uh, people needed to hear me talk. I needed that for myself. I needed to be able to overcome that hurdle. And I did yeah. through your program. And, and, now, and now like we are, you're shooting video and you're, you're doing audio and doing a <laughs> podcast for crying out loud for a lot, a lot of people that are going to download this. And, and a lot of people are going to learn from you. There's no question. And that's yeah. what happened um, in our time together is that people heard you and they could resonate. So let's go back here. What do you think? You know, you, you, you have a good life. And before you came into the program, you had a good life. And initially I wanted to talk about, which I don't think it's where I want to go now so much, but I wanted to talk about leveling up, but you didn't just level <laughs> up. You leveled up in, but you see people, when people talk about leveling up, so many, so many people talk about leveling up in your external world, level up your work, level up your money, level up all these physical external things. But it doesn't seem as I'm hearing you, that's how you, you've leveled up to date. So can whatever you can share, let's share and let's dig in. So as you hear me saying this, what do you want to start sharing about your emotional leveling up? Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of coined the phrase in the group. I'm not motivated. I'm elevated. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we're here to level up people. And that kind of took on a life of its own. But leveling up to me was becoming the person that you want to be. And that's what I learned in the program was who am I being? Not what am I doing? Not what, what I having, who am I being? And, you know, my life was centered around 20 years of stress and anxiety. And I mean, bad, shut down, irrational thoughts, worry about everything. I lived what uh, I would call a what if lifestyle, whatever the worst case scenario was, that's what I lived. I mean, mm. day in, day out. It wasn't until I realized, I mean, I lived in flight or fight pretty much for 20 years. Mm. I've seen every therapist. I've seen psychiatrists. I've seen psychologists. I've talked to energy people. And it would always stem back to that. And throughout your program, which I believe is 14 total weeks, I mean, anxiety and stress was massively reduced in three or four weeks. I mean, I even mentioned that to you in the group, like, Oh my God, uh, how, how did this happen? <laughs> you know, in the group. So I love well, Matt, Matt, like, Matt, I want to, I want to interrupt you and guys listening. I know somebody once said, well, Jim interrupts people. Well, I interrupt nope, because I want to, I want to expand on that for people listening because they want to know people right now are listening and they're saying, Oh my gosh, Matt, you know, I, I have the, I have the anxiety. I have the stress every day. And they're thinking if that guy did it, what did he do? What, and if you can put it together, maybe it's not one thing, but what happened for you or in our time together that took you from that stress and anxiety to, as you said, massively reducing it in a few weeks? I never took the time to sit and ask myself questions. I never realized the answers were within. And so what I did was as we were going through certain steps, I realized, wait a minute, I've been committed to stress and anxiety. And what I mean by being mm. committed is as things would, a circumstance in your life would happen, my neural pathways were already set. The stories I told myself to, this is how you deal with it. You stress, you go through anxiety, correct? It could be something as simple as I'm on my way to work and I get in a traffic jam and it triggers me. And then I start worrying about being late. Well, what does that do for the rest of your day? 
it, it throws your day off if you sit there and harp on it, correct? Mm-hmm. Of, oh, mm-hmm. I was late today, traffic was this. Yeah. And I lived that way, that's a simple example, but I lived that way for, for years. And it, what I did differently was I started to pay attention to my thoughts. Mm-hmm. I started to rearrange my thoughts as far as how do I feel? Is this the worst case scenario? Is this just a story? Is this something I'm telling myself? And I realized pretty quickly it's the same thing, just plug and play the circumstance. Mm-hmm. So I was a, in a nutshell, I was able to get out of it by thinking my way and asking myself the correct, the correct questions. What impact does this ha- have on the rest of my day? It's nothing. It's one thought. You have, mm-hmm. have 10,000 of them a day. It's one. Let's move yeah. on. Yeah. So let me ask you there, if you were sitting across from somebody and you're having a margarita and it's not even, you're not even on podcast or any of that. And they said to you, you know, what's one of the most valuable things you've learned in the last year in your life? And you said, I wrote down here, pay attention to your thoughts. Do you think it's a fair statement that if more people became aware that they're even going through thoughts on a daily basis, that would change their life? Uh, that would be the understatement of the century. I think it would massively change everything about your existence. Your thoughts are your existence. I mean, that's, we are thoughts, uh, but you know, we're the creator of our thoughts. So you have the power to create whatever you, you think up. Um, and I would definitely say that paying attention to how you think as well as, you know, paying attention to what you say to yourself, the words you use and how powerful words can be and thoughts can be. I think people would be amazed what they could accomplish. Yeah. Very, very true. Um, Self-talk, right? Which is what we talk about partly in the program. Let me ask you here, and I know you have, and I appreciate you preparing. I know you have some things that you want to cover. So we'll get to those. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have time for all your entire list, but we'll get to them. Let me ask you this. You're a daddy. You got, I think two kids, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're married. How has this, how has, how has your shifting, shifting, shifted your marriage? Um, well, that's, that's good because we're going, you know, that was the second thing that I talked about was uh, on my list is I'm present. I'm present. Anybody out there who has stress and anxiety understand you get on this mental loop, right? You get on this loop and you cannot get off the loop and it's just, what if, oh, I worked myself out of it. Okay. What about this? What about this? So I was not present for the first five years of my child's life. I mean, I was Mm -hmm. there, I was at the games, I was at home, but mentally I was at work. I was thinking about my health or all these things. So I, I wasn't present in my marriage. I wasn't present with my children. I never really sat back and had the laugh with them. And what, this has done for me or what has changed for me and made it better was I I became present. I took control, well, not control, but I basically paid attention Mm -hmm. to my thoughts and said, we're not going to go there. We're here right now. (laughs) And this is the most important thing to me. I wanted to, why I was unhappy was I was not living my values. My values is family first, outdoor life second, success third. Well, my family's first. Well, how are you going to live a family value if mentally you're, you're never there? Which, by and, the way, let me add there. So yeah. we, did th- we did an exercise on that to help you discover your subconscious values. Love and I think, I think what you discovered is even though your family, even though you said your family was your highest value, you were still living and putting maybe work or external things and, and bowing down to the external things and making those your highest value or paying attention to them without even recognizing it. So you were literally ignoring your highest value, which which in your heart was your family, is your family. Yeah, I mean, that is spot on. I was, I didn't even realize (laughs) that I was doing it. I -hmm. got such in routine, the habit was so deep that I didn't even realize I was doing it until I wasn't doing it anymore. We talked about, you know, in, in the program, blind spots, I, n- I never saw it. I didn't see it until I saw it. And then yeah, all of a sudden it was like, 
wow, I mean, you've been doing this for five years. How did you not recognize this? Yeah, you just got on, the, you got an autopilot, which is what yep. we as humans do, which your autopilot, unfortunately, had you in stress and anxiety all the time, your fight or flight, which actually was conditioning the brain to like a little engine running at the back of your head, uh, the back of your, uh, the bottom of your brainstem, just running or at the bottom of your brain, put it that way, just running all the time on fight or flight, anxiety, 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 and stress. And now, ah, take a deep breath, you've pulled yourself out of that. Now, let's go here because a lot of people listening, have, and he's smiling, at guys, if I know a lot of you are listening now, man. audio, uh, that's where it's going to go is, how has it affected your relationship with your kids? We just went to 30A in Florida for nine days. I never picked up the phone. Oh, my God. I never worried about work. We dog jumped with the kids. I got a two-year-old. I had to jump it off the dock. Uh, you know, we want a lake with a partial view of the beach. So the beach was like 100 yards. And. I, we were present. Like it was the best family vacation. I, I didn't even stress on the road trip, which was 12 hours, you know, to go there. I was just in the moment. I was happy. And, you know, when you go on vacation, you have all these stresses, kid routines, anybody yeah. on, you know, the podcast who has children, it's very hard with a two and five year old when you're traveling 12 hours. And, we had a blast. I mean, we really um, focused on just being together as a family. My parents and my brother came up and visited me for a day or two while I was out there. And just seeing my, my children with their grandparents, I never took time to realize how special that really was to me. Yeah. And, let and me, I got let me, to do that. Thank you. And let, and let me go there, Matthew. I hear what you're saying. And, and Again, I don't want to promote TCP, and you're not, but I want to go there with what I want to say is, um, and I don't, this might not even apply, so I'm asking because it may apply. As you've changed, have you had an impact on, and before you answer, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking. As you've changed, have you had an impact, adults, have you had an impact on them around you? And what have they noticed and what changes have they had? And the reason that I mention this only for anybody listening is, we want the world to change so badly, but when we change, the world a lot of times changes around us automatically. So wherever you want to go with that or whatever you can toss in there. Um, I can use three examples that come to my head. The first one is my marriage. I thought I had a great marriage. I was not present in my marriage. I did not hear things that my wife, you know, would tell me because I'm off, you know, somewhere in my head. Mm -hmm. And since I started, you know, basically working my way internal to external, it changed our relationship. I mean, my wife told me yesterday, she said, this is the closest connection I've ever had to you. And we've been together for 18 years. You Wait, know, so let me back up like, before you yeah. go on. Yeah. I'm, I'm jumping in again. Yeah. So even though because you started and you said, well, I had a good marriage. So you thought mm -hmm. you had a good marriage. But what I wonder if we were in her mind. The whole time you're thinking, oh, I'm in a good marriage. But I wonder really what she was thinking then as opposed to now. Uh, she was thinking, and she'll tell you, I mean, you know my wife. Uh, mm. She had to be the rock while I was breaking down with stress and anxiety all the time. Mm. And over a decade of that, I became a shell of the man that I was. You know, when we got together, I, it was always, in her words, <laughs> I'm dealing with a third child all the time, mm. you know, even though you are an adult and you, uh, you know, have a great life, she's there to pick up the baggage. And once that went away, it leveled up our marriage to where now we probably have better conversations than we've ever had in our life. I mean, we were just on 38. We talked for three days and it was wonderful. Maybe I mean, there's I really felt like a new connection with my wife. Maybe there's a third little Bonadonna coming along now? Uh, I'm not kidding. in the plan, sir. I'm almost 40. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my God, I don't know if I could do another one. So. <laughs> well, you guys are getting along. So, and that's amazing yeah. because as you improved your, your, your mental, and I don't mean this in any kind of diagnostic way, but as you improved your mental health, you mm -hmm. affected the relationship and it significantly improved her mental health and her life as well. And then I go back here. I want to leave here really quickly and to go back to your other two examples is <clears throat> your kids are young. 
and you become two and five, you become much better living examples for your kids as the parents you are now. Because see, your kids through osmosis and, 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 and observation would have learned to be these things that you were. To sh they would have learned to be stressed, most likely, or anxious, or not present, or not the full and complete relationship. And as a result of you changing, you and your wife have changed. Now you've changed the model that you are for your kids. Fair? That's definitely fair. Perfect. Okay. And I wanted a lot of parents to see that is that our kids learn. They, they, whatever we are and however we are, our kids learn that from us. Mm -hmm. Okay. You had a couple of more examples. And because I, I just wanted to visit with you because I knew we'd go somewhere. I just didn't know where. And I wanted it to unravel organically. Yeah. So what else do you have? And that's what I wanted to. I mean, I jotted around notes, but it, everything is going to be like it's it's going to be, you know. And that's that's just kind of where we're at. And but the, the second example, you just nailed it. It was yeah. my children. I mean, my kids were frustrated, and I would always be like, "Man, why is my child so anxious?" Well, it was because I was anxious. They were feeding off of my energy. You had wrote something to me on, uh, you know, in the group about children absorbing. And even though yeah. we know that as parents, we get into little triggers, little frustrations, had a rough day, and we bring that home with us. And that's what our children see for that hour or two before you go to sleep. And what, what has changed in my life is, okay, this is what I'm feeling. Let me talk about my feelings in front of my kids and what, you know, what I'm going through, you know, kind of feeling. And let me let me live internally and let them watch it. And so what we've noticed with our children is they actually behave a lot better because I behave a lot better. They sit, tend to sit with themselves a little yeah. bit more. And, you know, even my son was, was telling me the other day, and it made me so proud, I, I legitimately cried in my... Hmm. Dad, you know, we have a lot. I'm very grateful that I have you and mom. Well, the reason we started, they started doing that is because at night, my wife and I go over with our children. What were you grateful for today? Let's talk about it. So they're already learning by us changing what we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's definitely number two. And as, as another adult, you know, uh, I have a, a friend of mine who he's struggling health-wise. And whenever you talk to him, the words that he tells himself about, I'm unhealthy, I'm not doing well, I'm broken. And, you know, just kind of having conversations with him and saying, look, man, look how you're talking to yourself. I can relate to this. I talked to myself like that for years. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start looking at internally what is good about your life or your, your you know, physical condition? What are the good things? And start really talking to yourself about those things. And you're going to see a huge difference in how you feel. Let me, let me go there. Yes. Thank you for that. So week number two in our time together, we talk about which I'm going here because you've been talking the whole time about this is we talk about stories and then you talk about your friend. And then what you're doing is you're hearing the stories that he's telling himself about how, right. You're grinning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so how powerful do you think stories are in our life? I would say that stories are probably 95% of everybody's life. We yeah. all have them, right? This is how I grew up. This is the way life is. Life actually isn't like that. And I learned that, you know, in my four months with you is that life is choices, right? Mm -hmm. So which choices are you making? <laughs> Just because your parents see something one way or taught you a certain way doesn't necessarily mean it's quote unquote, the right or wrong way. And then what you start to realize as an adult is, oh my God, I'm my dad. Oh my God, I'm my mom. <laughs> you know, you start seeing these things and you even notice it as a parent. A lot of your listeners are going to notice as a parent where you look at your child and they're five years old and you go, oh my God, that's me. That's mm -hmm. me. That's a story I told myself. And now my child has that exact same story. I need to make an adjustment. So yeah, 95% of your entire life, I would say, is stories that you either thought you experienced or was told to you so many times that that's your reality. 
Yeah, you, um, as a parent, one of my really good friends, um, I I was there when their first kid was born. I saw him take his first step. He's six now. And they, even though he's a friend, they call me Uncle Jim and everything. And and I said, How, how's your son doing? I uh, mentioned my name, but not here. And he goes, he goes, he's doing really well. He's growing up so fast. And the kid is a hard head. And then he said, he's joking. He goes, he must have gotten that from his mother. And we started laughing because <laughs> the kid learned from him. But I want to go back here for all parents, and then we'll go somewhere else. Matthew, it's a really important thing you brought up because I did mention in our time together is I, I, I know some people uh, very, very close, and they don't have a happy marriage for a lot of reasons. And they put on the happy face for their kids. But then they wonder why their kid is always acting up. There's so much tension between the parents, even though they're physiologically trying to show, oh, we're mommy and daddy. The kid's picking up on all the tension and the energy between the parents and is acting out on that. And what Matthew said and is confirming, and I want people to please hear, is you can put on a happy face all day long in front of your kids, but your kids are reading your energy and your vibration and your frequency and whatever you have, your kids are picking up and learning. So be very mindful how you, you, know, how you are with your little bitty kids is how they become. Okay, let's do a little lottery here. I don't know what's on your list. Look down on your list and, and pick something, and let's go from there. Okay, so, um, you know, one of the biggest things, like in, in the program, I had three or four weeks where it was just like, bam, 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 bam. I'm just getting hit with all these, uh, what I call attention bubbles, which was, here are the blind spots I never paid attention to, and now mm -hmm. that I see it, you cannot unsee it. You cannot mm -hmm. undo what you already know or have seen. And it was self-love. We're always mm. trying as a society to find external things to make us whole. And what I learned and what I started to implement was it starts by loving yourself first. And I never did that in my life. I was the guy who it was never good enough. You know, I wrote notes, uh, talking about being on your podcast today, not smart enough, not polished, bad accent. Think about what I'm saying right here. What, did I give myself anything positive to make myself feel confident, you know, mm -hmm. to be on a podcast? No. And, you know, hey, you're successful. Well, Bob makes more money than me. Who cares? But that was the life. It was just, it was, I never celebrated successes. I never thought of myself as you know somebody that can help others like others help me and really what it came down to is I just wasn't loving myself and that was other than the stress and anxiety that was the biggest change of my life I wake up every morning and I have four mantras that I share with myself and it's all to help myself I love myself number mm -hmm. one I'm a successful business owner that helps a lot of people. I am a great provider for my wife. I'm supportive and loving to my children and my wife. And I just repeat, repeat, repeat. And I do that because this is the real me. And that's what I need to see in myself before I can make others happy. So that would be the, the biggest thing that I took away from TCP. And I think that's why I had a, a huge transformation was the answers were always there. I just didn't know the questions. Yeah, that's really big. So for people listening, when he, he mentions TCP, that's the transformational coaching program, yeah, the sorry, acronym. Man. No, that's fine. That's fine, Matthew. And we had, I think 511 people registered and it was, I'm still laughing at this. People shoot where we have a Facebook group. It's private. People shoot videos and lives and all these kind of things relative to the program. And Matthew shot his first live like week number four. And you remember that. And he even said in his video, he was nervous. And he goes, I didn't even look at my phone for like six hours after I shot the video because I didn't want to see comments. And I'm laughing because you became a, a sensation in the group after that first video. Remember, you went from hiding yeah. to shooting videos all the time. Now, what I want to point out, he's grinning. What I want to point out is jokingly here, but not jokingly, you talk about being on a podcast now and for three months ago, you wouldn't even shoot a video, 
I'm laughing at if I see you a year from now and you got the Matthew Bonadonna podcast and you got 10 million downloads, you're this internet sensation because people can relate to you. Yeah. But he's laughing, but, and you know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he's even saying part of that has crossed my mind at some point that look at the people you're helping because a lot of people don't, you're just what I call, me too. Like a, just a normal person. You're just part of the world, normal person. But you talk about things that so many people, they don't really pay attention to. But self-love, that is a huge one. How, how did that happen for you? I mean, we talk about it a lot in the program and we do some, yeah. some things on it. But when was this epiphany for you that, and what did you say? Did you say, I don't even think about this or I don't know if I love myself or what does that mean? What was the start of this for you? Well, the start of it came from, you know, for, for, for people that don't know anything about the programs, we have a lot of coaches in the programs and all the coaches have their kind of special, you know, area mm -hmm. of expertise. Yeah. And it was probably week four or five into the program where one of the coaches, she would always ask me these questions and they were real deep questions. In the first two weeks, I didn't want to answer them. Well, mm we had an exercise where we had to sit with ourselves, and I was deathly afraid to sit with myself. I was just, mm. I'm going to talk to myself negatively. I'm going to critique myself. There's always going to be these issues. The opposite happened for me. The answers to a lot of the questions on why I was unhappy came out in that four, you know, three, four hours of, of me just sitting with myself and realizing, wait a minute, I got a lot of good in me. Look, mm. look what I've come back to. You know, you were talking about my videos. The community helped me so much transform. It's the life. It was the, the lifeline mm -hmm. for self love that I needed. And to be able to sit with myself and be able to go over the things that I learned about myself in that time with the community and get their feedback as well as them holding space for me was the game changer when it came down to self-love. That was the game changer to be able to be in a group with like-minded individuals who's on the same energy level as you are and to be guided by people who've been there and have done that and have worked their way through. It's truly priceless. And that's kind of, that was the start of when I realized the answers were internal and this is a big thing that I need to get over. I need to learn to speak to myself better and I need to learn to love myself. And I also need to learn to, you know, have gratitude for what I've been able to do in my life. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing um, follow up and answer from you. And what's interesting is you said before we even did this, Am I smart enough? Well, you sound like a pretty smart guy to me, and I've known you for a while. So I, I don't think there's any more concern that you have about are you smart enough, and especially considering yep. the fact you're helping people. Okay, look over on your list. Pull one more thing over there that you think people would, would say, that's me. There's something that I can take from this and some, some way I can grow from this. Okay. You, have 14 thing, you get 14 things, and so now you got something in there. Yeah. Oh, I definitely do. Um... You know, one of the things that I think people will relate to a lot that I had is I have a really big heart. When I mm. talk to friends or if I talk to my wife, hey, why do y'all love me? You, you got a giant heart. I want to help people. Well, I realize that I'm a people pleaser and I have people pleased my whole life to the point where I was miserable. And I think a lot of your mm. listeners are going to relate to that. You don't want to help your brother move. He should hire a mover, but you're going to do it even though it makes you miserable. Cause <laughs> you know, and I just recently, just recently before TCP had this exact same example, uh, work wise with people pleasing, it's the weekend. Hey, can you do this for me? Sure. I'll do it even though I'm with my children. And that's really what was important for me. Or, uh, you know, other examples, just name them with people pleasing and, that was me. I actually wrote down, I made myself miserable by serving others. I could not tell people no. I was committed to making others like me to make up for how I felt internally. Mm. So the people pleasing 
was to really looking back at myself, mirroring myself and saying, you're doing this to make yourself feel better. And really it's doing the opposite because it's not from your heart. You're not doing it from your heart. You're doing it to help, you know, to, to make their lives easier. Um, and so now I made a commitment, like I talked about with my morning mantras, to love myself, to be happy, to live the life that I want to live first. I do want to help people. Mm -hmm. I think it's society in general want to help people. But there is a difference between being committed to yourself and helping others and only helping others because you don't want to disappoint or you fear you, you fear that they're not going to like you, you know, and, and those type of things. So that would definitely be something I think a lot of people, the majority of America or the world could really relate to, to people pleasing. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about that in the program and I do a lot and the coaches do about, and I just did a podcast episode on that recently is that generally if we're the people pleaser, we're doing it because we want to be liked. And if I please enough people, they're not going to be mad because I did what they, you know, I did what they asked me. And if they're not mad at me, then they're going to love me and accept me. But if I don't people please, they're going to be mad and they're going to reject me is where most people work from. I used to be there. Now you've known me long enough. I'm kind of like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, exactly uh, you be mad all day long i don't care it has nothing to do with me you know what it's a hundred we're in texas right now you let's a hundred degrees hire a damn mover to help you move i'll pay for it right. but i'm not exactly. gonna go yeah i'm not going up three flights of stairs to your apartment when it's a hundred degrees outside and i get that i've been there before where are you now how do you when somebody asks you to do something and you don't want to do it where do you come from now I just talk about boundaries. I've learned to, you know, yeah. be committed to what I need to do and really just setting up boundaries. And I do it in a very respectful way. You know, uh, I, I really do not have time for this. My schedule is full. Is there a, you know, a different option that we can, you know, that I can help you take mm. more or less like steering it to me first, helping second, and only really putting myself where I genuinely want to do it. I would do it for free. I would, you know, I would just, it would make me feel good uh, to be able to do this for somebody. And that's how I'm living my life. And honestly, this is the best life that I've, I've had right now. This, this exact life where it was so important for me to commit to me. And now I'm realizing backing up in the podcast, we talked about, you know, how did your transformation help other adults? Mm -hmm. This is how, mm. this is how take control of, well, not, oh, I shouldn't say take control, be <laughs> mindful of the attention of what, of where you want, what you want to do and just do those things. And you'll be surprised that most people understand yeah. Let me, let me ask you something. And, and guys listening, when I say guys, I mean, men and women and everyone just, but to colloquialism, but is he's correcting himself a couple of times when he uses the word take control and he's grinning because we talk about in the program, there is no such thing as control. You can't control anything. You can't even control your own thoughts. You can choose them. But back when he was having the, which he talked about when you were having all these stress and anxiety thoughts, they were just bombarding you like, like hornets and you couldn't control them. And you've learned what you even said is that I can choose my thoughts. Now, let me ask you this. A word that you used is, do you feel, and I, I already kind of know where we're going to go, but some people that are listening are probably thinking, well, if I look at myself first, then I'm selfish. Do you feel selfish now that you've got boundaries and you put yourself first? Not at all. I feel aligned. Mm. I feel aligned. I feel that one of your coaches asked me the perfect question during my journey. What do you want and who do you want to be in your life? And I never sat back and I, I, I did not ever ask myself that question. So I don't feel selfish at all. If I'm internally unhappy and don't want to do it what, what good am I doing for anybody else mm. I'm not doing I'm not doing any good for anybody else um 
so no, I don't feel selfish at all. And, and I don't even look at it as being selfish. I look at it as being aligned on who do I want to be? Who do you want to be? And are you actually, you, you are, you have become that because you're operating from this place. Mm-hmm. Who do you want to be? I want to be a happy, present father and husband. Mm. And I want to live the life I want to live on my terms. I do not want to, uh, I do not want to live with societal norms. I do not want to live on how others think of what I should do in my life. Um, you know, one of the things that I thought was amazing is the other day I watched a podcast with Elon Musk and I looked at, you know, with training, I looked at the things he was saying and he's unapologetic. People can call him selfish, but he does what he wants to do. He helps the people he wants to help. And because he does things this way, how many people benefit from mm-hmm. what he creates? And the world. And, and the and world. The, I mean, yeah. and that I would have never noticed those things if I wouldn't have went through, you know, the last four months of, wow, this guy's got, you know, he's living the life that I want to be. Yeah. Thank you for that. And here's, here's, we'll go. Final thing. Um, doesn't matter if it came from me, one of the coaches, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, we have a phenomenal coaching team. I mean, these people are like amazing in what they do. What's your favorite quote in our, that you live by? Whether I said it, somebody else said it, somebody from the program brought it in. What's the number one quote that you live by from our entire time together? That's life-changing. Okay, so I have three of them, and it's, it's hilarious okay. that you mentioned that up because I have them all three written down. When you change your vibration, everything changes. Okay. 100% possible, 100% of the time. Yep. You are where your attention is. I was going to say, you better at least have that one in there somewhere. You are where your attention is. Yep. And somebody asked me a couple of days ago on a podcast where I was being interviewed, and they said it's the most amazing thing I've ever taken away or taken, taken from from my work, which I got from my brother-in-law, the shaman, is you are where your attention is. What does that mean? Um, I would say that it, it, it goes down to thoughts. You know, mm-hmm. what, where are your thoughts? Being mindful of how you think, being mindful of the way that you speak. And if you're going to sit there and you're going to think about a negative thought or the what if, like I lived 20 years of my life, you know, that's where my attention was. It was on what is the negative side of this? What is the worst case of this? And not what is the good about it? Where are the blessings that the universe has for us in everything that we do from work to, you know, just because you went through a little of pain or a little bit of adversity, if your attention was on getting that golden nugget, I would call it, it changes everything. You know, use something as simple as traffic. Okay, the person cut you off. Okay, your attention can be on the person cut me off and now I'm mad and I'm going to go track them down. I'm going to have a <laughs> bad day at work. And, you know, you live you lived here in Dallas. You get it. I mean, there's a lot of people. There's yeah. traffic everywhere. There's no way you're going to avoid it. My attention would have been on the, the thing that doesn't serve me. When mm. now the attention would be, you know, maybe they're just late for an appointment you know, oh, they're, they're speeding. They're going to be down the road in two minutes. I'm, it's not going to affect my day. Um, so that's kind of what it means to me. I call them li- attention bubbles. I try to mm-hmm. get as many little positive attention bubbles. And in my brain, they're little green positive signs. <laughs> and I just try to grab them all day long. And I notice when you do that, you tend to have a really great day. All the time. All the time. Yeah. You know, um, and not to piggyback on something you said, because I know, you know, we have an allotted time frame, but for people that are listening to the podcast, I've been asked to do podcasts for the last three years. I've been asked to speak for the last three to five years. I've been asked to go on people and being interviewed. I could never do it. I could not do it. Um, my fear of judgment the anxiety and stress and the worry of 
what are people going to think about the way I speak? I, I declined everybody. And my first podcast is with you mm. and you command a huge audience and I'm not nervous at all. Mm. At all. That's I amazing. look forward to this. This was an honor for me to be on, on the, the podcast. Well, I'm grinning all the way through. Thank you so much. And I'll tell you what I'm really thinking about is I like your nice haircut. Oh, and I'm yeah, kidding, man, guys. I we, have the COVID haircut. Well, I'm laughing because I've known <laughs> him for a while. He's got a full head of hair. And back when we had we were in the COVID trenches, I mean, he would pull his hat off and it'd be like his hair would just go poof. <laughs> I mean, he, he had this massive, massive head of hair. And I'm like, he's clean cut now. Matthew, thank yeah. you so much. I really, it was an, it was an honor having you with us and you're still with us, obviously, mm -hmm. but it, it was an honor having you in the program. It's an honor, you know, having you here because I know people listening, the things you've talked about, the self-love and the stress and the anxiety and, and where your attention is and the stories. I mean, like I said, you're just a normal guy. I'm a normal guy, but when somebody like you, you know, you might say differently than me and people hear it and they're like, yeah, that was me. And if he can do it, I can do it. He's given me some tools. You've helped a lot of people today, and I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, say thank you very, very much. Thank you. I will receive it. Thank you very much, and thank you for doing what you do. I think you're doing a great job, and, you know, I hope that you're able to help millions in any way that I can be a part of that. I will be because, you know, to end, you know, the podcast was, this is a lifestyle for me now. Like, this is, this is life from here on. Uh, and is being a part of these programs and, and really leveling up. And thank you for that. And to come back at that is we're always living a lifestyle. It's what lifestyle do you choose? Do you choose stress and fear and anxiety and poverty and struggle with money? Or do you choose health and wellness and abundance and love and, and, and these other things that all these things that you have in your life? All right, brother, make it a great day today. And I'm sure I'll see you in, one, in the group. And thank yep. you again so much. Thank you, sir. You have a great day. You too. Talk to you later. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, if you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions to support at jimforton.com and I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. Also, if you want transformational content like this daily, connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Jim Fortin. Finally, I do have a personal request. I believe that we're all here to help others and to grow and evolve ourselves. Together, you and I, let's help more people. If you would, please leave a review on iTunes and a good one, by the way, <laughs> I'd be grateful. And through your assistance together, we can transform more lives. Thanks for listening.